Hi everybody. Blessings be upon all of you. I have some more food for thought. You must know by now Ariel Sharon passed away. I believe he'd been in a coma for eight years. Some people liked him. Some people didn't. But when he died, this man and what he said became more prominent. What he said has been known for a while, but the death of Sharon has now placed it on the forefront once again. It's that Kaduri. He'd been dead about eight years. He was quite old. I mean, you know, they say his birth date and his age and all that stuff is up in the air. Some say 106, some say 108. This gives a range of 110 to 118. But this man, before he died, had a prophecy. His prophecy was, as we'll scroll down and see, about the coming of the Messiah. Now he wrote and left in a sealed envelope the name of the Messiah. The note was not supposed to be opened until one year after he died. And when it was opened, he is telling people, I met and saw and talked to the Messiah. In his name, many Jews believe Jesus was not the Messiah. Therefore, they were waiting for the Messiah to come to this earth for the first time. But he tells them in his death note that was opened a year later, his name was Yehoshua. Jesus. Stunning a lot of Jews that he would say that. But he was great influence upon all a lot of the people. So by saying that, supposedly a lot of people have accepted Jesus as the Messiah. Now this man, Kadiri, was skilled, very knowledgeable in Kabbalah. Now, I've done some reading on Kabbalah and stuff and everything, but, well, I haven't put years and years and years of study into it, like this guy. You hear some celebrities that are into Kabbalah. A lot of those celebrities, though, you can rest assured, are into Satanism. There is no doubt about that. But anyways, some of the celebrities are into Kabbalah. The biggest name that I know of would be Madonna. But when I looked at Kabbalah, what, what I got out of it, and perhaps I'm wrong, it's, it's kind of a mystical type of a thing, you know, magical, mystical, sort of, is what it struck me as. But the point being, some things I just can't get past on the prophecy. some things he nailed. If you believe in Jesus, then you know already he is the Messiah. He did die for you, and by his shed blood you can be forgiven if you turn to him and gain entry into the kingdom of heaven. But I don't understand 
why he said the Messiah would come and attach himself to a man. But he wouldn't let anybody know right away that he was here. Now that part has me stumped. Christ ascended upward into the heaven from the earth's surface he went up into the heaven when he makes his big return with his saints and angels to kick the devil's ass and all the devil's followers he will come back the same way you will see him in the sky and they will descend down to the earth that is written as far as the rapture goes I don't believe there's going to be a, a rest stop a pit stop I can't find anywhere where it says he will be here for any length of time to pick up scoop out his faithful his faithful followers and take him home before things get severely bad and crap really hits the fan. So when there is a rapture, I think you can make book on it that it's going to be a quick deal and that he's not going to use television and stand in front of a podium or a temple anywhere and announce that he's here to get everyone. We know that Antichrist has to come first. That is what we're told. That is what is. you can read. But the prophecy did open something up because it opened a window a window of time. This man didn't give a, a date. He gave a window of time, though. Not until after the death of Ariel Sharon. Not before. Not during his coma. But only soon after his death. Soon could mean a hundred years, ten years, ten months, ten weeks, five days, you get the drift. So we have a marker. I believe we have another marker because he got the name right. Whatever he saw whomever he saw and talked to at the very least the name was right now the time would be after this man's passing which we have that well, Antichrist will come and he will impersonate he will deceive I don't want to slam the man because he's dead and he can't defend himself. But it could be possible that what he didn't see is what he thought he saw. It could be possible he got some truth and some false truth. I want to believe that he wasn't deceived. But Satan is a deceiver, and it is possible. A lot of people didn't like Sharon. Some people did. He's gone now, so the hate for him should go away.
hopefully, from those that hated him. Well, I think we should definitely examine this man's pro prophecy and think about it. Because he got the name right, one. He gave a window of time, two. But three, about him not saying, I'm here, and kind of being incognito, I'm scratching that one off. But something's definitely going on. Because we do have the blood moons coming up. How do you know when I'm coming back you'll see signs in the sun, moon, and stars? Well, when you got a bunch of blood moons and you got a bunch of solar and lunar eclipses and, you know, then you put that together with happening on Jewish holidays, I think that's pretty well saying you're getting a signal. You're getting a big flashing light. It's wanting you to pay attention. It's wanting you to get ready for something. So let's pray for the whole world, shall we? No matter what location you're in in the whole world, there's evil. There's good too, but there's a whole bunch of evil. There's sick people. There's people in distress in the middle of dying. Starvation and hunger. People that are scared. People that are homeless. People that are confused, misled, persecuted, controlled. Everybody needs God. Everybody needs prayers. Not just one certain sect of people or one certain country. Whoop. Everybody in the whole world. I don't know how much more plain to make it. There's good and there's evil. There's God and the devil. That's all there's ever been. God doesn't need a bunch of subcategorical religions because his is the only one. The devil is the one that needs a bunch of subcategorical alternate anti religions to take you away from the one true religion, the one true God your creator, your maker, the guy that loved you so much that he came as a man and died for you so that your sin could be wiped away if you turned to him and lived right and asked for your sin to be forgiven. Then you could enter into his kingdom and live with him and everybody else there forever and ever. It's what it's all about. This orb that we live on for the little short length of time that we're here, that's nothing compared to eternity. Nothing. It's a barely a spit in the bucket compared to eternity. There's no time in eternity. You understand? A soul is eternal. And you are going to go one place or the other. You will be in heaven or you will be in hell. What's your choice going to be? I hope you make the right one.